So, uh, we showed that covariance of x and y is 0, but then and of course, by definition also it was clear that x and y are not independent, but we can also show um, analytically and that is see just consider this conditional probability x equal to 1 and y equal to 0 given y equal to 0. So, probability conditional probability x equal to 1 given y equal to 0. So, uh, it will be equal to probability x equal to 1 y uh, equal to 0. Uh, divided by probability y 0, y equal to 0, but this is by definition is equivalent to probability x equal to 1 and then here it will be probability x equal to 1 plus probability x cumulative distribution function, uh, because uh, probability y is 0. Uh, so, um, should we not, uh, hmm, uh, okay. yes. So, uh, this is y 0 when x is not 0. So, x is 0, uh, x is not 0, that means x is value 1 and x is value minus 1. So, therefore, um, uh, this is 1 by 3 divided by 2 by 3, which uh, equals half, but this is not equal to probability x equal to 1. So, if x and y were independent, this conditional probability should have been equal to probability x equal to 1. So, therefore, x and y are not independent. In the last lecture, I defined covariance and then I also defined the correlation and just try to show you that uh, correlation is nothing but the dimen dimensionless version of covariance. And now, here uh, a few more examples of uh, or uses of uh, covariance. So, you saw that um, when you wrote variance x 1 plus x 2, uh, the formula was variance x 1 plus variance x 2 plus twice covariance x 1 x 2. So, uh, in general if x 1 and x 2 are not independent, then I for to compute the variance of x 1 plus x 2, I need covariance x 1 comma x 2. right? And uh, in general if you take it, if you take sum of n variables and you want to compute the variance, then uh, by the formula it would be. Uh, because again the property that we defined for the variance, uh, you can just apply them iteratively and this will be sigma i varying from 1 to n variance x i, right? because it will be covariance of x 1 comma x 1, x 2 comma x 2 and so on and then the product terms where x i and x j are different, i and j are different. So, this will be equal to twice sigma covariance x i x j if you put i less than j, because remember uh, for the covariance also we said that covariance of x i comma x j is the same as covariance x j comma x i. So, if you impose this i less than j, then it will become twice, because uh, covariance x 2 x 1, I will write as covariance x 1 x 2. So, then it will become twice this or you can write this as summation i j, where of course, uh, you have to say that i is not equal to j, then it will be covariance. So, whichever uh, formula suits you you can use that. So, this will be covariance x i x j simply without the two, if you simply summing over all possible values of i and j, so that i is not equal to j. Right. Now, um, interesting um, again um, an example to show you that how you can make use of these uh, properties that we have enunciated for uh, uh, the covariance. So, uh, consider the multinomial distribution. Remember, there were n objects and then there were k categories. So, uh, multinomial distribution with k categories. So, then a probability of uh, b, uh, success in one category is p 1, p 2 and p k. And we have already discussed this distribution and we saw that the uh, probabilities for successes will behave like binomial. So, for example, in category 1 it will be binomial n p 1, it will be a binomial n p 2 and so on. So, this is how you uh, uh, you know you define the multinomial distribution n comma p, p vector, where p, p vector is p 1, p 2, p k. So, these are the probabilities of being in a particular category, which means you know success in the first category so on. So, now if you want to compute uh, covariance x i x j uh, for any i j, then uh, for i equal to j, it will be co uh, the covariance, covariance x i comma x j will be covariance x i x i which is uh, we know is variance x i and since each x i is binomial um, n, n p i x i is binomial n p i. So, therefore, we know from the binomial distribution formula that the variance is n p i into 1 minus p i. Right. Now, uh, for i not equal to j, uh, we want to um, 
compute, uh, we want to compute uh, covariance x i x j. So, let us just do it for co x covariance x 1 comma x 2. So, the question uh, asked is, uh, what do you expect? Uh, should this be negative covariance x 1 comma x 2? See, see the idea is that uh, now after having defined correlation also, we, we see that um, this measures the linear relationship between and then of course, we still have to talk about cauchy schwarz inequality and so on. So, anyway uh, the expectation is that this will be um, uh, negative. Why? Because you see if, if the uh, total number of objects is fixed uh, which is n right. Now, if um, a large number of uh, people or objects are in x 1, then accordingly um, x 2 the number will not be that large. So, uh, there will be negative correlation or negative relationship between x 1 and x 2 and that is what covariance will measure here. So, uh, and we will see uh, after computations that it actually comes out to be a negative number. So, uh, variance x 1 plus x 2 is variance x 1 plus variance x 2 plus twice covariance x 1 comma x 2, which we uh, wrote down earlier. Now, uh, it turns out that we can compute these three things, because variance x 1 is n p 1 into 1 minus p 1 plus uh, variance x 2 is n p 2 1 minus p 2. And uh, x 1 plus x 2 again, we had seen that when you merging to um, binomials like n p 1 and n p 2, then the sum will behave like a binomial n comma p 1 plus p 2. So, um, uh, there must have we must have done some exercises also or you can just sit down and uh, obtain this result for yourself. So, therefore, variance for x 1 plus x 2 would be n times p 1 plus p 2 into 1 minus p 1 minus p 2. And so, from this relationship it is this quantity that we want to compute. So, therefore, 2 covariance x 1 comma x 2 will be just take this to this side. So, n p 1 plus p 2 I am just opening up the brackets. So, n p 1 plus p 2 minus n p 1 plus p 2 whole square, which you can write as now I do not know why I have written it as. So, this is plus right plus 2 p 1 p 2 and then you see the terms will cancel out, uh, because um, p 1 square plus p 2 square. Yeah, you see here this is n p 1 plus p 2 and this is minus n p 1 plus p 2, which cancels out right. And then uh, plus uh, n p 2 square plus n p 1 square and minus n p 1 square plus p 2 square. So, everything cancels out you are left with minus 2 n p 1 p 2. So, therefore, this is less than 0 because p 1, p 2 and n all are positive cumulative distribution function 0. So, the covariance and so, um, uh, once you know that the covariance x 1, x 2 is minus n p 1, p 2, you can immediately conclude that covariance x i, x j will be minus n p i, p j. So, this was made possible because of this formula, which was again uh, written down using covariance. And now, for this multinomial distribution, you can immediately write down the, uh, the formula for uh, uh, covariance x i x j as this cumulative distribution function relation coefficient also, which will again turn out to be negative, because the correlation coefficient will be simply this divided by standard deviation of x i and this will be standard deviation x j which we have already know right, because it will be n into p i 1 minus p i under root and this will be n into p j 1 minus p j under root. So, therefore, uh, uh, this computation has become so simple. Okay. In the example, um, where we took um, x 1 to be x and x 2 equal to x square and I said that probability x equal to 1 is equal to probability x equal to minus 1 is half, then we saw that expectation of x and it was equal to expectation x cube was 0. And therefore, you could see show that covariance x 1, x 2, where x 1 is x and x 2 is x square is 0. Now, actually what you can you can always show this if whenever um, x 1 that is x is a normal 0 sigma square, that means expectation of x is 0. And, um, or, uh, or, or x 1 has any other distribution, which is symmetric about 0. Okay, because you saw that x here is symmetric about 0. So, probability x equal to 1 is equal to probability x equal to minus 1 is half. So, this is symmetric about 0. So, now if I take uh, instead of uh, this, if I had taken uh, the distribution of 
x to be normal 0 sigma square or any other distribution which is symmetric about the origin, then you can show that covariance x 1 comma x 2 is 0. So, therefore, you can construct so many examples where covariance is 0 uh, between two random variables, but they are not independent, because there is a definite a quadratic relationship between the two. And so, uh, knowing one value or knowing value of 1, you can predict the value of 2 uh, second variable exactly. And therefore, uh, this is what we want to uh, sort of through this example, I thought we can uh, show you and emphasize this fact again that covariance um, 0 just uh, says that the two variables are uh, uncorrelated, but uh, uh, they are need they need not be independence. So, independence goes much deeper than that. Okay. Now, very interesting inequality and very powerful one, which uh, we show see right now. Uh, if their expectations exist, then uh, this is the inequality. That means, expectation of x y square, uh, expectation of x y square, uh, sorry, expectation x y whole square, expectation x y whole square, uh, 1 minus of 1 minus r 1 t into 1 minus r 2 t. So, the same principle will be used and you can show that expectation y square. And equality holds if and only if for some constant a, uh, y is uh, a x. That means, there is a linear relationship between x and y. So, if x and y are linearly related, then the cauchy schwarz inequality would be satisfied as equality. Otherwise, it will be st strict inequality. So, now, um, we are in this we are assuming because see y square is a positive valued random variable. So, expectation y square can be uh, either 0 or positive right. Now, um, if it is 0, so uh, we are assuming that expectation y square is positive because if it is 0. So, when can expectation y square be 0? Because y square again is a positive random variable. So, it will take only positive values. And so, when you write the expectation, it will be uh, possible values of y square into the probabilities with which it takes those values. So, therefore, th that will be positive sum. So, that cannot be 0 unless y is 0. So, that is clear. So, therefore, uh, if expectation y square is 0, it will imply that y is a, a 0 variable y takes only 0 value and uh, then the, this inequality will be satisfied, because if y is 0, this is 0 and this is 0. So, both sides you have 0 and so the uh, inequality is satisfied as equality. So, therefore, uh, it is safe to assume, I mean there is no harm in no loss of generality, I take it to be. So, uh, f x j x will be j n c 1 f x, f x raise to j minus 1, 1 minus f x raise to n minus j. Now, we can compute uh, the uh, p d f for x 1, the first first order uh, statistic independently and then we can uh, confirm that uh, the what we have obtained uh, follows by this formula also. So, um, let us consider the uh, e probability of x 1 less than or equal to x. So, then the complement of this event will be probability x 1 greater than x. right? this is less than or equal to x. So, the here it will be x 1 greater than x the complement. Now, if, if the smallest uh, statistic, the smallest order statistic is greater than 1, it implies that all the uh, statistic must be greater than x. So, x 1, x 2, x n all must be greater than x. So, the two events are equivalent and therefore, I can say that probability x 1 greater than x is equal to 1 minus of f x raised to n, right? because the probability for this is 1 minus or for any x, for any x i greater than x, the um, probability is 1 minus f x and therefore, since all of them have to be greater than n. So, this is 1 minus f x raised to n, right. And then, uh, so therefore, I can write uh, prob uh, the cumulative distribution function for x 1, uh, this, this should be sorry, this should be x, f x 1 of x will be 1 minus of this. Uh, 1 minus of x 1, x 2, x n all greater than x, right. And therefore, this will be 1 minus of 1 minus f x raised to n, because this is what you have here and this is equivalent to or for x 1 greater than uh, small x, then implies all these are greater than small x and therefore, this is the event, right. And so, when you differentiate both the sides, you get f x 1, f x 1 of x as n then minus minus becomes plus and the derivative of this is small f x and then this is 1 minus f x raised to n minus 1. 
So, if you substitute j equal to 1 here, this will be 1 n c oh this should have been n c j n c j. So, n c 1 which is n then f x and this of course, j is 1. So, 1 minus 1 is 0, no contribution then 1 minus f x raised to n minus 1. So, the two match 0, because t is a real number. So, therefore, this is satisfied. Now, if it is equal to 0, then um, E x plus T y whole square is equal to 0, if and only if E x y, because that means that this equation is satisfied as equality equal to 0, then uh, the discriminant must be equal to 0. So, this is it, right. So, this is uh, one part and uh, now we have to, we want to show that uh, under uh, for what value of t this will happen. So, you see um, from here, because x plus expectation of x plus t y whole square is 0, this as we have argued earlier, uh, the random variable itself must be 0 with probability 1, right. x plus t y has to be 0, because otherwise this expectation cannot be 0, right. So, um, now the thing is that from here itself, you can say that we can compute the value of t, which uh, makes this um, happen, right? which makes the discriminant equal to 0. But you see, if I do it here, if I take the expectation here, it will be E x plus t and let us say the value of t naught, t uh, which is the t naught we are looking for. So, this is equal to 0. So, from here uh, we might say that why cannot we compute the value of t naught, but you see um, I cannot guarantee about E y being non 0, right. And so, uh, therefore, uh, I cannot compute the value of t naught from here. So, what you do we do is we, if we multiply this by y, then again uh, x y plus t y square is a 0 random variable, right, because this is 0. And so, now if I take the expectation, so this will be 0 equal to expectation of x y plus t y whole square. And so, then from here, when you bring expectation inside, this will be t naught is expectation x y upon e y square. Okay. So, therefore, Cauchy Schwarz inequality is satisfied as equality, if and only if, right, if and only if x can be written as, so this is t naught. So, from since this is now 0, I have computed the required t naught. So, this will be x is equal to minus E x y upon E y square into y. Now, this is a linear relationship between x and y. So, Cauchy Schwarz inequality is satisfied um, whenever x and y are related linearly and this is the constant which relates x and y. Right. Okay, and we will see the implications of this. Now, uh, using Cauchy Schwarz inequality, we can prove uh, uh, the following properties of the correlation coefficient rho. And um, so, for any x 1, x 2, any for any for x 1, x 2, any two random variables, uh, we will first show that your value uh, co of the correlation coefficient lies between minus 1 and 1. And this is what we meant by um, uh, this is what we meant by uh, standardization and because covariance uh, the only difference between correlation coefficient and covariance is that you divide covariance by uh, the standard deviations of x 1 and x 2 and then uh, you get a standardized uh, quantity. And so, uh, this will be between minus 1 and 1 and if it is 1, then they are positively related uh, x 1 and x 2 and if it is minus 1, then they are negatively uh, related. So, we will just go through these properties uh, in a few minutes. In the Cauchy Schwarz inequality, <coughs> replace x 1 by <coughs> x 1 minus expected x 1 and uh, x 2 by x 2 minus expected x 2. So, then the inequality will look like uh, expectation of um, x 1 minus e x 1 into uh, sorry uh, expectation of the product x 1 minus e x 1 into x 2 minus e x 2. This whole square is less than or equal to expectation of x 1 minus e x 1 whole square and expectation x 2 minus e x 2 whole square, right. Because uh, uh, the Cauchy Schwarz inequality we obtain for any two random variables x comma y. So, here I can uh, replace the variable x by um, x 1 minus e x 1 and y by e x x 2 minus e x 2. So, this uh, is valid, right. And um, 
So, uh, which means that, uh, so which reduces to uh, covariance of x 1 x 2 whole square is less than or equal to variance x 1 into variance x 2. So, uh, cauchy schwarz inequality really simplifies uh, proving these properties of the correlation coefficient. So, <coughs> but this is nothing, but if you if you divide this by this, then it says that covariance x 1 comma x 2 whole square divided by variance x 1 variance x 2 is less than or equal to 1. So, if I take the uh, square root then and the positive part of the square root, then this will be less than or equal to 1. Right. So, with the absolute. So, therefore, absolute value of the correlation coefficient is less than or equal to 1. So, the first property is easily proved using the cauchy schwarz inequality. Okay. And now, uh, you want to show that if it is satisfied as equality. And remember, in the uh, when we prove the cauchy schwarz inequality, we showed that x will be equal to expected x y upon e y square into y. So, this was it. Now, here I have replaced x by uh, x 1 minus e x 1 and y by x 2 minus e x 2 and here too. So, this becomes. So, therefore, um, this will be in because of our uh, transformed variables. This is x 1 minus e x 1 is e expected value of x 1 minus e x 1 into x 2 minus e x 2 upon sigma square x 2 and this is x 2 minus e x 2. So, this is the linear relationship between x 1 and x 2, but uh, this quantity you can see is the covariance uh, and then you write you need uh, uh, variance of uh, standard deviation x 1 into standard deviation x 2. So, this will uh, come here. So, you know just rewrite this expression. So, uh, one stand uh, sigma x 2 I keep here the other is here. Now, here I am dividing by sigma x 1. So, I uh, multiply and therefore, this is what I get. Now, this quantity um, Yeah, achha, I did not say here. Uh, so, the two uh, part two was we had to show that rho is equal to 1. So, we, st we start with this. So, if I start with this, then uh, in the cauchy schwarz uh, we said that if it is satisfied as equality, then we get this relationship uh, which um, then minus E x 2. And so, uh, just divide by sigma x 1 here. This. So, therefore, this is the. So, we said that if so, that means, you are just getting uh, the specialized linear relationship, uh, you can write it little differently. The same, same thing here, we can write in this way, because we are saying that rho is equal to 1. Right. So, then you can predict the actual relationship, the actual linear relationship between x 1 and x 2. If you And similarly, if rho is equal to minus 1, then there will be a minus sign here. The same analysis will be done. Right. So, this is what we are trying to say is that uh, you know your uh, quantity rho this correlation coefficient is measures the uh, linear relationship uh, uh, nicely it captures the relationship linear relationship, but it fails to uh, show you the relationship when it is uh, quadratic or it is non-linear and rather I should just say that when the relationship between two variables is uh, non-linear then it fails to. So, being 0 does not help you. Right. So, okay. um, therefore, that means you cannot conclude that uh, the variables are independent if the covariance is 0. So, now let us take this uh, special case and show you that uh, in when, when the two variables are uh, normally distributed, then you can show that the variables being uncorrelated implies independence and uh, the other way. Of course, the other way you know if, if two variables are independent, then certainly the uh, correlation coefficient will be 0, but uh, we will show it the other way. That is, if uh, the correlation coefficient is 0, then the variables are uh, independent and this is valid true for uh, normal distribution only. Okay. So, here um, uh, just look at the bivariate normal distribution. So, bivariate normal distribution uh, you have uh, the means are mu 1, mu 2, variances are sigma 1 square, sigma 2 square and the correlation coefficient is rho. So, the expression for the PDF for a bivariate normal distribution is uh, 1 upon 2 pi sigma 1 sigma 2 under root 1 minus rho square. Um, and therefore, you see this is valid, because rho we have just shown is uh, between minus 1 and 1. Uh, the absolute value rho is less than 
or equal to 1. So, and then exponential e raise to minus 1 upon 2, 1 minus rho square, then x 1 minus mu 1 whole square upon sigma 1 square, plus x 2 minus mu 2 whole square upon sigma 2 square, minus 2 rho into the product term divided by a sigma 1, sigma 2. So, this is the uh, expression for a bivariate normal distribution. right? So, the proposition is that if x 1 and x 2 are independent or x 1 and x 2 are independent if and only if they are uncorrelated. So, this is what we can finally, establish after giving you so many examples, where uncorrelation uh, uh, uncorrelated did not mean uh, independence. Okay. Uh, so, if rho is 0, then you can see immediately from here, this expression simplifies, this becomes 1 this is also 1. So, it will be 1 upon 2 pi sigma 1 sigma 2, then e raise to minus 1 by 2 right? and x 1 minus mu 1 upon sigma 1 whole square plus x 2 minus mu 2 upon sigma 2 whole square. This term is not there anymore. So, now you can immediately uh, decompose this e raise to this. So, therefore, you can write this as product of 2. So, here it will be 1 upon root 2. See, 2 pi I can write 1 upon root 2 pi sigma 1, then the x 1 terms I will uh, you know put together here and the x 2 term is this and you can see that these are 2 p d f s and each of them see this is this is normal, this is normal mu 1 sigma 1 square right. Two, uh, p d f separate p d f s and each is normal. So, therefore, uh, in fact, uh, so much simplification here. right? The moment you say that they are uncorrelated, then they are also independent by our definition. right? If the product of the, if the joint p d f can be written as the product of individual p d f s or the marginal p d f s, then we had said that the variables are independent. So, therefore, and so the if and only if part gets proved, because rho 0 implies independence and of course, independence implies that rho is 0. So, therefore, the proposition is established that is uh, if x 1 and x 2 are independent, then they are if and only if they are uncorrelated provided x 1 and x, the joint p d f of x 1 and x 2 is a bivariate normal distribution. So, you can see how we are relating the results that we are getting and then of course, all this simply finally, gets used in you know estimating lot of uh, uh, lot of probabilities that are useful to you. Okay. So, um, this I am just discussing uh, the exercises 6, which I will be discussing uh, at the end of this lecture. So, there is a question that I have posed there and I have asked you to show that correlation coefficient can be written as. So, rho x y is variance x plus variance y minus variance x minus y upon twice under root of variance x into variance y. So, essentially what I am saying is that the covariance x y can be written as variance x plus variance y minus variance x minus y divided by 2, because this anyway figures in the definition of rho x y. So, this answer is straightforward. You start with variance x minus y and so that will be uh, x minus e x minus y of minus e y whole square expectation of this whole square. right? And this open up the brackets. Uh, so, this will be expectation of x minus e x whole square uh, plus expectation of y minus e y whole square, then minus twice uh, the product term expectation of x minus e x into y minus e y. right? And this can be, uh, so this I can bring to this side. So, therefore, immediately you have variance x plus variance y minus variance x minus y is equal to this, but this is nothing but your covariance. So, in fact, uh, you now you can divide this by rho x rho y and 2 you can take to the other side. So, I just because see uh, what happens is that all these different expressions for the same thing that you keep using. Um, are handy. Sometimes it helps to, because you know these values, uh, because you uh, from the known standard distributions of these variables, then you can immediately write down the correlation coefficient. Okay. Now, um, again see my theme uh, here has been to show you as many examples as possible about uh, you know the covariance or the or the correlation coefficient being 0, but um, the variables are not independent. 
and you can see how uh, you know contrived they may look these examples, but they make a point. Okay. So, now here x is a normal 0 sigma square and suppose y is independent of x. So, x is normally distributed 0 sigma square and y is uh, uh, independent of x. So, and the probability y equal to 1 equal to y minus 1 is half. Okay. So, therefore, and this, this implies that your expectation y is 0, right. If probability y equal to 1 and y equal to minus 1 is half, then your expectation y is 0. Now, define another variable z, which is equal to x y. So, you see immediately from here, probability z equal to x is half and probability z equal to minus x is also half, because y is either 1 or minus 1. Right. Now, if you compute uh, probability z less than a, then this will be um, x less than a and the, that is with probability half, right? because z is equal to x with probability half and then x is equal to uh, minus x. So, if you are writing, um, so you will be writing z less than or equal to a, which is minus x less than or equal to a. So, this is equivalent to x greater than or equal to minus a. Right. So, that is what I have written probability x greater than minus a into half, but remember x is normal, normally distributed and if x is normally distributed, it is symmetric about the origin and so um, x less than a and x greater than minus a are the same probabilities. Now, if you can um, carefully see, you see in the normal, um, because 0 sigma square. So, therefore, if you, if you take uh, this thing here. So, uh, let us say this is take a to be positive does not matter it is the same thing and this is minus a. So, x less than a is, the, but you see uh, from the normal thing this area and this area are the same. right? So, x less than a is this all probability and x greater than minus a is this which are the same, right? because the tails these values are the same. Therefore, this area and this area are the same. right? Therefore, uh, this event is the same as x less than a and so therefore, um, uh, uh, this ha follows from x being symmetric about the origin. Because, and so, um, again it is not necessary here that this should be, uh, this should be uh, normally distributed, because I think anything which is symmetric about the origin would have done the job. Right. Okay. So, therefore, uh, this says that and so this is equal to oh yeah, I should have put it here. So, from here it follows this is probability x less than a. So, that means z and a z and x have the same uh, cumulative density function have the same C D F, uh, which implies that they have the same P D F also. So, x and z have the same C D F and they have the same P D F. Right. Now, if you compute the uh, correlation coefficient between x and z, that will be expectation x z minus e x into e z upon sigma x into sigma z, but uh, e x z is expectation x square into y and your uh, uh, e x and e z. So, uh, yeah, e x is 0 and therefore, e z will also be 0, because this is normal. So, yeah. So, that means, you need a distribution, which is uh, symmetric about origin. So, therefore, then uh, its expectation will also be 0. So, therefore, I do not think you need n to be this uh, x to be normally distributed. Fine. So, then um, this is part is 0 and this is e x squared y, because x y and x and y being independent, this is e x square into e y, right. But e y is also 0. Remember, y is again symmetric, y is 1 and y is minus 1. So, uh, with probability half, both the values have equal probability. So, E y is 0. So, E y being 0, you get this as 0. So, therefore, um, uh, the co correlation coefficient is 0, but x and z are completely dependent by definition as we saw. right? x and z are completely uh, this thing, because they have the same C D F, they have the same P D F, but still they are uncorrelated. So, this is again you know I am just uh, wherever I get these kind of examples, I just thought I will bring them to you to show you the. Okay. And uh, so, right now uh, uh, we have said uh, reasonably good amount joint probability density functions, uh, which was uh, so more than one variable, then we uh, talked about how uh, we can uh, obtain uh, 
joint density functions of more than one variable. Now, let me talk of order statistics. So, um, you know a further application of the same concept. So, see if you have a sample of size uh, n random sample. So, x 1, x 2, x n are the observed values and uh, the C D F. So, they are coming from the same distribution. So, you can say these are also identically independently distributed random variables, because it is a random sample. So, uh, the C D F is that means, the cumulative density function is denoted by f and the probability density function is denoted by small f. Okay. So, uh, when you order the um, observations, so this will be the smallest one. So, therefore, um, this will be the notation. So, x 1 less than or equal to x 2 less than or equal to x n. So, this is the ordered arrangement of the n sample values that you obtained. Okay. Now, so the question arises, uh, can we find, um, of course, uh, one would want to talk about the um, joint density function of all x 1, x 2, x n and in particular, you would want to find out the uh, density function uh, p d f. So, either both of them are continuous or both are discrete. This is when we are defining the conditional expectation. Okay. So, the nature of the two variables should be same in the sense that either both are continuous or both are uh, discrete. Right. So, then um, the definition is of course, straightforward, because now uh, x equal to x. So, this is fixed uh, this is given to you. So, now to find the expectation of y given x equal to x would be from minus infinity to infinity y times f conditional distribution of y given x. So, this will be the definition. This is the case when x and y both are continuous and in the discrete case, it will be the summation will be for all x for which p x x is greater than 0. Because remember this conditional p d f will have p x x in the denominator. So, therefore, we will only consider summation over those x's for which this is positive and then of course, uh, uh, probability y given x for all y's for which this is positive, because otherwise the product will be 0. So, under this condition you can for the discrete case, when x and y are both discrete, you can define the expected uh, conditional expectation by this formula. Okay. So, we will start from the, the exam, take this example of a discrete case. So, where um, the joint density function is given as probability x equal to x and y equal to y. So, in from this table you can immediately see now x equal to 1 and y equal to 1. So, this is the probability. So, you can read the table this is 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4 and so on. Right. And uh, you see um, when you add up these probabilities, uh, they give you what? They are the values of x equal to 1, x equal to 2, x equal to 3, x equal to 4. So, you immediately get the probability for y equal to 1. So, therefore, uh, when you add up these rows, the numbers give you the uh, marginal p d f of or probability mass function for y. Right. So, this point 2 is the probability when y is equal to 1. Similarly, y equal to 2, because uh, the possible values of x are 1, 2, 3, 4. So, when you add up these probabilities uh, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2 and 4, 2, you get the probability of y equal to 2. So, that adds up to 0 0.5 and this is similarly probability y equal to 3 is 0.3 and the, these 3 must add up to 1. Similarly, here when you add up the probabilities of um, for the conditional probabilities x equal to 1 and y varies from 1, 2 and 3, they will give you the marginal for x. So, this will be the probability x equal to 1, this will be the probability x equal to point, uh, 2, x equal to 3 and x equal to 4 and they also add up to 1. Right. So, now um, from our definition, uh, see I am writing f whereas it should be p's it does not matter, because uh, the, the, the discrete case, we, we, are, we are in the used to habit of writing the uh, p in terms of p's, the probabilities. So, it does not matter, but you see now here you can immediately find out uh, probability, conditional probability of x when y is 2. So, conditional probability x, x when y is equal to 2. So, for example, here when you want to compute conditional probability of of x equal to 1 given y is equal to 2. So, um, calculations are simple, um, y is equal to 2 is given, you are given by this, right. And so, um, conditional probability, so you will divide by a probability y equal to 2, which is point divided by standard deviation of x 1 and standard deviation of x 2. y is equal to 2 is 0.1 divided by 0.5 
which turns out to be 0.2. Similarly, conditional probability of x equal to 2, given that y is equal to 2, will be this joint density function of x equal to 2, y equal to 2, divided by the probability of y equal to 2, which is 0.5. So, again 0.1 upon 0.5 is uh, 0.2, and similarly the other two computations. And if you remember, uh, um, okay, uh, I have not analytically proved it, but we should be able to. Okay, maybe that's what we should do next time. So uh, here, in any case, you see these these probabilities also add up to one, as they should, because this is now the uh, you've got the conditional, which is also a probability mass function and therefore, uh, the probabilities here should add up to 1. So, it is a 0.4, which is then 0.54 and so 0.54 plus 0.46 is 1. So, you just uh, verification. right? So, now we want to define the uh, 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 compute the expected value of x given y is equal to 2. Okay. So, um, um, Yes, I mean you just take the definition that we wrote down. So, here um, uh, the marginals are given to you point, uh, no, no, this will be 1.2. Okay. So, so, the expectation here would be when x is equal to 1, when x is equal to 1, then uh, the probability that you obtain. Okay. Oh, oh, I am computing it for y equal to 2, sorry. So, we have computed these probabilities. So, when x is equal to 1, so when you are computing this expectation y is equal to 2, so then it will be a value of x equal to 1 into the probability uh, that you get uh, the probability mass function when y is 2 and x is 1, right. Is it okay? So, the expression that I wrote down, see here it will be uh, you are computing, see y is fixed. So, you are computing the expectation of x given y is equal to 2. So, as x takes different values given y, so you will multiply by the corresponding probability when uh, x is for example, x is 1 and y is 2. So, x is 1 and y is 2, this is the probability. When x is 2 uh, uh, and given y is equal to 2, then this is 0 0.2. So, we will take those probabilities, the conditional probabilities and multiply by the corresponding values that x takes. Right. So, the conditional probability are here, this is this, the 0.14 is this and 0.46 is this. So, I multiply by the corresponding values that x takes and therefore, this is 2.28. Yeah, in fact, I am going to uh, talk some more in terms of the functional aspect of uh, expected value of. In other words, in fact, we can see it here, when I am talking of expectation of x given y equal to uh, capital Y equal to small y. So, you see, uh, because you are taking expectation with respect to x. So, then um, you will be, th this will turn out to be a function of y. So, I started giving you out an example, uh, but we will discuss this in detail uh, uh, in the next lecture. So, this will be a function of y, because you have taken expectation with respect to x. So, that part is gone, x part is gone, it is no longer a function of x, but it will continue to be a function of y. Right, and then we will see what kind of relationships we can predict on what how we can use this. So, but initially uh, through this example, I just want to show you how you go about computing these uh, conditional expectations. This is the whole idea. Okay. So similarly, you can compute uh, the expectation of x given y is equal to one. So uh, now I did not do this detailed calculation here, but you can see uh, that when you're wanting to compute uh, for example, here uh, x is 1 and then given y is equal to 1. So, uh, x is 1, uh, you will be writing that probability. So, I will divide uh, uh, 0 0.02 by uh, 0.2, okay. because y is equal to 1. So, y is equal to 1 is this. See, you simply have to, just as we computed the probabilities uh, for uh, conditional probabilities for x equal to 1, given y is equal to 2, I simply uh, divided these numbers by the corresponding probability y equal to 2. So, here also, when y is equal to 1, you divide these probabilities by this and you get the conditional probabilities of x equal to 1, y is equal to 1. Then here, 0 0.06 divided by 0 0.2 will give you the probability 
that x is to conditional probability x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 1. So, this way you can. So, there is no. So, that is what all I have done. I have divided this by 0 0.2. So, then I have written it as 0 0.1 into 1. So, computing the conditional expectation. So, multiply by 1. Then similarly, 2 times 0 0.06 divided by 0 0.2 and then 3. So, 0 0.08 divided by 0 0.2 and then 0 0.04 divided by 0 0.02 and 4 into that. right? So, that number comes out to be 2.7. right? And in the same way, you compute the expected value of x given y is equal to 3. So, here I will take 0 0.07 divided by 0 0.3 into 1, then 0 0.03 divided by 0 0.3 into 2 and so on. So, you will compute those uh, expectation. And now, as I am saying that, if you take this expectation and yes, this I have just written now written down this expression. We will uh, spend a lot of time on it trying to show you, but computationally you see, um, if I now want to compute the expected value here and as I told you, this is a function of y. right? So, um, when you want to compute expectation through conditional expectation of x y given equal to y, then all I have to do is to uh, multiply these corresponding probabilities. For example, 2.7, I will multiply by the probability that y is equal to 1, because this, this is the conditional expectation of x given y equal to 1. So, I will multiply by so, you can treat this as a function of y. So, this into the probability that y takes the value 1. So, that will be 0 0.2 into 2.7. 2 Similarly, this will be uh, the condition, this is the conditional expectation of x given y equal to 2. So, this again uh, will be 2.88 into the probability that y is equal to 2, which is 0 0.5. So, 0 0.5 into 2.88. And similarly, here the probability that y takes the value 3 and that into the expectation here, conditional expectation. So, this number comes out to be 2.82. And, y, and we can verify that this is actually equal to e raise to x, because um, this is the uh, marginal density of x. So, to compute the pro expectation of x, I will multiply <coughs> 0 0.19 into 1 plus 0 0.19 into 2 uh, plus 3 times 0 0.23 plus 4 times 0 0.39, which again gives me the number uh, 2.82. So, the two numbers are equal.